Hello everyone! In one of the previous video series, I've talked about the project which is called Ignite 3. In a nutshell, it's an ongoing effort uh, within Apache Ignite community to create the next generation of Apache Ignite database with approved usability, developer experience, and modernized modular architecture. In the same series, I've shown a quick demo of the first alpha release of Ignite 3, which demonstrated some major usability improvements like simplified installation procedure, the new CLI tool, and new dynamic configuration APIs. And today I'm happy to announce that we've just released the second alpha build of Ignite 3. This actually constitutes a very significant milestone in Ignite 3 development because we have several major, very important features completed. These are features like unified data replication infrastructure, modernized discovery and cluster membership protocols, uh, new schema management uh, mechanisms and the new table API, which provides basic operations to insert the data into the database and read it back. In the description to this video, you will find a link to a blog post where I describe uh, all those different features in a little bit more detail. And here I wanted to show what we have in action and also uh, show how you can try this on your own. So let's jump right in. The best way to look at the Apache 2 release is uh, to go to the Apache Ignite website, which is ignite.apache.org. Click on this Get Started button right here. And then go to the uh, version drop down at the top and select 3.0 alpha version. That will bring us to the documentation for the, uh, for the alpha release. And what we're actually interested in here is the Getting Started Guide page right here. This Getting Started Guide gives you basic steps on how to install Ignite 3, uh, how to start the cluster, and how to run the example. So let's, let's go through this guide. So the first step is the installation, which is very simple. Uh, all you need to do is to run these three simple commands that are shown here. Uh, the only thing to note here is that commands might differ a little bit depending on which operating system you use. So these are the commands for uh, Unix, uh, Linux-based systems. Uh, which includes Mac, but if you're running Windows, you should switch to one of those um, two tabs depending on which terminal you use, PowerShell or CMD. So I'm running on Mac, so I will use the Unix tab right here. So the first command uh, downloads the zip package uh, for Ignite Alpha 2 from the Apache website. So we'll uh, give it a second. All right, so this uh, zip file is downloaded. Now we need to unzip it, and I'm just copy pasting commands from the web page to, to the terminal. All right, so this command unzipped uh, the zip file and also automatically switched to the folder that uh, contains uh, all the files for the Apache Ignite package. Now we need to uh, set a couple of uh, environment variables so that the Ignite CLI tool uh, is recognizable uh, within the terminal regardless of which folder we are in and the installation is complete uh, to verify the installation I will simply run the ignite command which will show me the uh, ignite CLI tool and the main uh, help screen for the for the ignite CLI tool the only thing left to do here is to run this ignite init command which will install uh, Ignite Core Artifacts locally on my laptop. This is a required step in case you want to run Ignite nodes locally as well. And since I want to run examples here and create a cluster locally on my computer, I need to run this Ignite, the Ignite init command. So let me do this. Uh, so Ignite's, Ignite CLI tool will download the Maven artifacts from Maven. Uh, these are all the artifacts again that are required to run to run the nodes uh, locally. You can also use CLI tool to add additional dependencies and uh, to enable Ignite optional modules, but we uh, we don't need that today, so I will uh, leave it there. Now the installation is fully complete. We have the Ignite CLI tool installed. We also have Ignite Core artifacts downloaded from Maven, which means that we can start creating our cluster. So to start a node, you should use the ignite node start command, which is shown here. Let's copy paste it uh, to the terminal to start the first node. 
The command actually accepts a couple of parameters. First one is the path to the configuration file. Uh, we have a configuration file included into the uh, examples projects and we can use it here. And then you also have to provide a, a name for the node, which has to be unique for every node that you start. So I'm using node-1 for the first node. So the first node is started and let's uh, start the second node as well. Exactly same command. I only have to give it a different name and I will use node two for the second node. All right, so we have a couple nodes started. To verify that the nodes are actually started, we can use the ignite node list command, which shows us the nodes that are running locally on this computer. And another thing that we can we, that we can verify here is that they actually discovered each other. And for that, I will take a look at the logs of one of those nodes. So let's pick uh, this one, for example, and I just open the log file and we can see that there is a topology snapshot printout uh, that shows that we have two nodes, both running on my laptop. And we also can see the names node one, node two. So everything works as expected. Okay, now I have a cluster running on my laptop. So let's also take a look at a couple of code examples that are included in the Alpha 2 release. Just as with Ignite 2.x, all examples are shipped as a separate uh, Maven project, which is located under the uh, examples folder. And all you need to do is to open this Maven project in your IDE. So I'm using IntelliJ IDE and I already have this project open right here. So let's first locate the examples. For that, we need to go to the uh, source folder. And there is a single package with, uh, with two examples in there. The first example I want to show you is the table example, which demonstrates the new table API, which actually will be the primary uh, data access API for Ignite 3. This API works with tuples or like with collection of values. And uh, it provides operations to insert, update the data, read the data, and so on. So let me go through this example to show you uh, the steps you need to do to create a table and to insert some data and then to read some data. So the first step is to create uh, is to start a node. Um, uh, this will simply connect to the cluster uh, that we already have. Uh, we're using the same configuration file which we used for the nodes that we started from the terminal. And we also using different name, which has to be unique for every node. So then we create a table. Uh, there is a specific API, which currently is available in Java. Um, we will also have uh, DDL support on top of that in one of the next releases. But essentially what it does is it creates a table with several col columns. So in this particular case, we create, the, we create an accounts table uh, with an account number, first name, last name of the owner, and the actual balance for that account. So all the data that we insert into the table uh, will always be compliant with this schema. So this is the schema first approach that we are taking with Ignite 3. Uh, and the main point here is that when you create a table, you need to specif specify the schema for that table. So now the next step is to insert something in that table. Uh, as I said, table API works with tuples. Um, or with collection of uh, primitive values. Uh, and we have to have tuple builder API to create those tuples, right? So we create a new account tuple right here. Uh, so we get the tuple builder from the accounts table, uh, set the field values, and then use the insert method to add this tuple into the table. So again, uh, any tuple that we insert into the table must always be compliant with the schema. So if we try to insert something that is not compliant with the schema we specified for the table, you will get an exception. And uh, in a similar way, we can read the data. Um, for that, we need to create a tuple that only contains key fields. In our case, that's just the account number. So we create a tuple with only the account number like this. And that's the account number, the same one that we inserted the uh, record with. And then we use the get method providing this tuple with the, uh, with the account number in it. And we'll get the, uh, the actual account tuple that we inserted previously uh, from the table. The second example is the key value binary view example. 
So I've mentioned previously that the table API is kind of a primary uh, API. It is a low level API which works with uh, tuples with collection of primitives. And what Ignite 3 will provide is a set of views, different views on top of the type table API. And one of the examples of such, so such a view, which is available uh, currently in Alpha 2, is a binary, is a key value binary view. So let's take a look at, uh, take a look at it. So this example goes actually through the same steps uh, in the beginning. It um, uh, starts a node. It then creates a table with the exact same schema as we had in the table example. But then we also create a key value binary view simply by using this key value view method on the, uh, on the accounts table. And this view, again, it works on top of the same table uh, with the same schema, but it provides a little bit different API for the user. In this particular case, uh, it still works with tuples because it's a binary view. Uh, however, it gives us a key value view on top of the data that we have. So instead of inserting a record uh, that has all the fields that are included in that record, we create two tuples, one for the key and one for the value. So the first tuple contains only the account number and the second tuple, which is the value, contains all other fields that we need to insert. And then we use the put method, uh, which, uh, which accepts uh, the key tuple and the value tuple, as opposed to the insert method with the whole record that we had in the ta table API. And then uh, again, similar to the previous example, we read the data, uh, but now we also uh, we use the get method, which also accepts a tuple that only has the account number because that's our key, that's our primary key, but the, the value will be uh, will only contains uh, those fields that are not included in the primary key. So it's kind of a value tuple, not a record tuple, as opposed to the to what we got from the table API. So again, the, 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 the most important point here is that this is not a different type of storage or anything. This is the same table uh, and with the same schema, and you can use all those different APIs on top of, on top of a single table. So depending on what your application requires, you can use either key value API or you can use uh, record API, top table API like this. And in the future, in the next releases, we will also have um, uh, several other types of, of views on top of this API. So that's it for this video. I would strongly encourage every one of you to try the Alpha 2 release on your own by going through the Getting Started Guide and running the examples. If you have any feedback, issues, questions, concerns, or any other thoughts, please do not hesitate to reach out to the Apache Ignite community. We will come back to you as soon as possible and we'll uh, consider uh, any feedback like that for our future development. Thanks for watching.